Hello everybody, my name is Father John Mitchell. I'm here in the Vesting Sacristy at Holy Family Parish in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And we thought that you might enjoy learning about all the vestments that a priest wears when he celebrates Mass. There's lots of different um, colors and aspects of what we wear, and each one has a meaning and has got a reason why we wear it. So, you might know a little bit of this, and you might not know a little bit of it, so hopefully you'll learn and enjoy this uh, this post. So, when I begin, um, I, I travel all over the uh, place. We've actually got six sites in our, our, our parish, so I, I always keep my Al here in a bag, and I'm always ready to go wherever we go. So I like to begin with an amice, which is an optional vestment. Um, and this, uh, as with most vestments, it has both a practical meaning and a theological meaning. So the, um, theologically, the meaning of the amice is that it's uh, meant to remind us of the helmet of salvation. So when I vest, um, we begin with it on the head, and there's a vesting prayer that we pray, and then it comes down on to the shoulders, um, and it's a bit like, like putting on my armor. I'm, I'm putting on the armor of God uh, as I begin to celebrate Mass. The practical reason is that it catches the sweat in my neck and means I don't have to wash my L as much, and that's uh, uh, one of the main reasons I wear it, which is great. So there's always a practical and a theological reason for wearing the vestments. So I got that on around and I tie that around my waist, not too tight. My first mass, I over tightened it and I was uh, dying for most of that mass. So tie that up. Next, we wear the alb, which is a white vestment and this goes on at every Mass. It's always underneath whatever else we're wearing. Um, this is a white robe, and it's meant to remind us of the white robe that each one of us uh, was dressed in on the day of our bap baptisms. So you'll notice when you're baptized, um, whether it's a baby or whether it's an older person, they are dressed in a white robe, and that reminds us of how we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And it also springs from a, um, um, from a line in the book of Revelation where it is said that those who are in heaven will be dressed in white robes, which again, have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. So um, this reminds me of my baptism. Next, I wear a cincture which is more or less as a belt. I've got this handy and any way of tying it up and it uh, won't get in a knot in my bag, which is nice. And this is uh, a symbol of the belt of purity, that we uh, robe ourselves in the purity of Christ and we ask his grace to purify our hearts, always anew. So that goes around the waist and I've got a knot that uh, helps it to be nice and tight and snug and as well adjustable, so it's it goes all through the mass. And these are getting ready for my stole, which you'll notice, that'll go uh, straight through there at the end. So that's that. Then we go to the chasubles, and that's the word for the colored robes that we wear. Um, and each of the colors has a meaning of why we're wearing it and what it's, it's reminding us of. So we're gonna do the video, we're also, so going to get a little bit of photos um, for the website, um, and we're going to do a little bit of a trivia um, over the course of Lent, of uh, course of the Easter season. So let's see. Let's begin with green. That's maybe the base color, uh, and this is the color of ordinary time. So you'll see it's it's green, and I'm actually uh, going to begin with the stole rather than with the chasuble. So I'll just. Hang this up again. So the green stole, this, uh, this goes around my neck, and this reminds us of the yoke of Christ, that um, Christ says, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Um, and the yoke of Christ 
reminds us of like a like a water yoke when you um, want to carry water from the well in the middle of the town. Uh, even the poor poor people in the time of Jesus would have had a water yoke. And what's amazing when you use a yoke, uh, well, when you don't use a yoke, you've got to carry your bucket and you usually waddle around, right, with your bucket of water and it splashes everywhere and you lose your water and it's really unwieldy. With a yoke, you're able to carry twice as much and to carry it with grace and with ease. Um, and that's what, that's what Christ um, does in our lives. He helps us to carry our burdens and our crosses with the help of his grace. So that goes around my neck, um, and this goes right through these holes, just like that, and that's just like that. Then on top of the stole comes the chasuble. So this is the, uh, the chasuble. This goes around our shoulders, just like that. Um, that's great. Um, the color green reminds us of life, that it's the, it's the color that we use all throughout ordinary time. Um, and that, that's the time of the year, not just where we're reflecting on what is ordinary as if it's what's regular or boring, but ordinary in the sense of it orders our whole lives, that the life of Christ, which we reflect on in the time of ordinary time, it's the whole mystery of the life of Christ, that ought to be what orders our lives and gives us uh, and gives us our orders, so the pattern of our lives. Okay, so that's the green chasuble. We'll go now to maybe the next most frequent color, which you can try to guess what that might be. It would be white. So the white... Uh, vestments would be worn on, on uh, major, major feast days. So on the days of saints or, for example, on the feast of uh, Christmas or Easter or um, any of the days where we're reflecting on the glories of heaven and of the saints. So, and again, it's white, just like my baptismal robe, the Al, to remind us of the purity of, of Christ that um, he purifies our hearts, and then as well, it's reminding us of, of the clouds and of heaven and of all the things above. So here we go, we'll get the right. photo we need. All right, nice smile. And one more. Very good. Okay, Thank you. very good. So that's white. Next, we'll go to the one that's right here next to the white ones, which are the red ones, just by chance in our closet. That's the order we have them in. So red, what would red be a symbol of? It reminds us of two different things. One is the blood of the martyrs. So it's those who have um, who have given their lives in witness to Jesus Christ, uh, and they gave their lives just as he gave his life for us. They've been completely united to Christ, even in the giving of their lives as a witness to him. So it reminds us of the blood of the martyrs, and we would wear it on the feast day of a martyr. But then as well, uh, it reminds us of the, of the fire of the Holy Spirit. So we wear it on, on Pentecost, um, and on, on days where we're recalling the power of the Holy Spirit. So we'll do our photo here real quick. All right. And again. Perfect. Very good. Excellent. So that's red. What's nice is right here as well, we have a mirror in case your hair gets messed up as you're putting on your vestments. It would probably be really distracting for the people if I came out with a mohawk. Okay. So, next color down the line here will be our purple vestments. Uh, and these are worn during two of the liturgical seasons of the year. 
And you notice whenever I put on the stole, I kiss the cross, which is right there, to remind me again that I um, embrace the yoke of Christ as I wear these. So the two seasons when we wear purple are during Lent and Advent. And those are traditionally penitential seasons. So in a way, purple is, is kind of a um, melancholy color, right? That it reminds us of a little bit of sadness uh, and just the gloom of, of sin, um, which we are repenting of during these, these seasons of Lent and Advent as we get ready for the great feasts of the year, uh, Christmas and Easter, or rather Easter and Christmas, if I want to do it in that way. So that's great. We'll get all nice and ready for our next photo. Okay, that's it. And one more. Very good. Very good. So that's purple. Uh, and you'll notice it's interesting, there are two sh shades of purple. There's lots of different kinds of, of purple. Um, uh, in a way, the reddish purple is used more during Lent, and it's, uh, it just is reminding us of the, of the coming feasts of the giving of, of um, Christ's life on the cross. And the purple is more the richer, the richer purple we use uh, during Christmas, because it really is a, is a festive season as well, and it's, it's reminding us of the royalty of Christ, our King is about to come um, and be born among us. You'll notice on this one that uh, the, the coloring of the, uh, I believe it's called piping, or whatever this is called, I don't remember, um, is pink. And that's a little bit of a, of a um, reminder of the, of the pink vestments, which we wear once during Christmas, uh, rather once during Advent and once during Lent. And those are on two Sundays of the year called Gaudete Sunday during Advent and Laudete Sunday during Lent, which mean respectively rejoice and uh, give praise or praise. Um, and those are the two Sundays during those penitential seasons where we're called to remember, even in the midst of, of the trials of those seasons, that Christ fills us with joy in the midst of the cross. So, two Sundays of the year, we are able to wear a pink vestment. Not pink, it's, it's rose, is what they always say. Uh, it's a rose-colored vestment. And so that just goes right on in, just like all the others. This one is a nice one that uh, has our holy family symbol right on the chest there, which has got um, all the rings of all the different churches that were merged when we merged as a parish. So there were six different sites, and they all joined as one. one two, or maybe it was seven. Anyway. <laughs> six. Okay. Yeah, anyway. So, um, yeah, and this, this uh, rose... Uh, Rose color is just a color of joy and of levity to remind us of the joy of Christ um, in the midst of the, the seasons of Advent and of Lent. Okay. And again, one more time. Thank you. Okay, very good. All set. So that's the pink ones. Now... Now we'll get into the really obscure colors, which would be uh, not as frequently worn, though it depends um, on what you've got in your closet at your parish. So one option to wear on any day where you can wear white. So for example, on any of the days of, of the uh, Feast of, of the Saints, or as well on like Christmas and Easter would be good examples. You can also choose to wear gold, which is like even more amazing. Um, just reminds us more and more of the glories of heaven. So, for example, um, our, our parish is called Holy, F Holy Family Parish. So maybe on the Feast of the Holy Family, which would be a really big solemnity for us, we would wear the gold ones as just like extra special ones. Um, or again... Um, <clears throat> 
Christmas and Easter would be good days to wear the gold if you had a nice gold one at your parish. So this one's a little bit, um, it's a little bit old and it's a little bit tattered. So we'll see if I'm even able to get it on. It's got safety pins right now. So I'm gonna see if it'll go on. Um, we'll just try it out. Okay, so here's the gold one. And we'll put it on just like all the others. I'm gonna tilt it back a little bit there. So here would be an example of a gold vestment. Um, and it's really nice. Oh, it's great, yes. So this um, is IHS, um, which stands for the name of Jesus. Uh, it's actually the key, key letters of Jesus um, in the Latin. Um, I believe it's in the Latin. So it's IHS, which reminds us of the name of Jesus. Uh, that's a great Jesuit um, uh, emblem. That's one of their main, main emblems in the Jesuits. So IHS okay. reminds us of Jesus. And again. Lovely. Very good. Very Thank good. You kindly. We got the photo. Now we'll go into our, the last one. This is the most obscure one that we've got in the closet here. And it's very uh, infrequently worn nowadays. But, but black is another color that we're able to use in the liturgy. Uh, and this would be used at a f funeral mass if the, if the person requested that they wanted black. This is um, traditionally is the color of mourning, so out of honor for the dead um, and just the mourning of the family. We could choose to wear black. There are actually three colors that can be worn um, at a funeral mass, either white or purple or black, and those all sort of reflect the various moods that we um, have in the face of death. White, we recall um, the power that we have in the resurrection, that when we die, we believe that we have eternal life in Christ. Uh, so we wear white uh, normally during a, during a funeral to remind us that, that this, this person, although they have died, that they live in Christ. They will rise again on the last day. And purple would be a penitential color to just remind us to pray for the dead, that we always need um, to be praying for our loved ones, that the power of God's mercy would be poured out upon them. Um, and then the black again, as I said, is a, is a color of mourning to just remind us that we are, we are somber um, in the face of death and that Christ wants to be with us even in the midst of that, of that sorrow that we have. So here's the black one. We'll get our photo for this one too. All right. One more. Got it. Very Thank good. You. So it's great. Um, this one's unique among our sets. It's an older one. It's got a little zipper there, which is kind of cool. All right. Now, before we close, let's go over and look at the adjacent closet because we have even more vestments over there. And those are the vestments that are worn by the deacon. So uh, oftentimes at a mass, we'll have a deacon who, who assists at that liturgy. Um, and they're right over here. So here are all the deacon vestments. And you'll notice we've got each one of the colors, red, white, purple, and green, and gold as well. Um, we don't have pink or black for the deacons here. But um, you'll notice, uh, let's just use a green one as a good example, that the vestment for the deacon is a little bit different in that it has sleeves. Uh, and this is because the role of the deacon is to, uh, to uh, assist at the altar, to kind of roll up their sleeves and be of service. That word actually, um, deacon, comes from the Greek word diakonia, which means service. That's their um, whole, whole charism in the, um, in the church is to be a servant. And what's neat is that each priest, before he's ordained a priest, is first ordained a deacon. Um, and we recall that we never lose our diaconal calling to serve, um, even as we then advance on to the order of the priesthood. 
So this is at the core of our priesthood as well. But their sleeves help them to be able to reach around and get the things off the altar uh, to just really um, not be encumbered um, by their vestments at all. So that's that. There's one last vestment in here which is interesting. Uh, and you may have seen this be used. This is called the cope, which is um, just, a, just a fancy word for a cape that is worn by the priest um, when he, for example, would do um, benediction or maybe when he would do a wedding that is outside of the context of mass, he would be able to wear this, this cape or this cope. Uh, it's great. And th this is a match with that other um, gold set that we are the, uh, that I wore over there. And you'll notice that we've got two uh, deacon investments that go with that as well. So this is a really old, beautiful set. I believe it was originally from St. Joe's. I'm not entirely sh sure, but that's what I heard. So let's just try on this cape here real quick, or the cope of the priest. So that just goes right around my shoulders like that. And normally I would wear a stole with it as well. So, but that goes on like that. And then I just hook the chain just like that. And there we are. So good stuff. So that's a little bit about all the vestments that a priest would wear at mass. There's lots and lots there. It's amazing. Um, I hope that you learned a little bit today. And um, if you have any, any questions, please just post them on, on Facebook and maybe we'll be able to answer your follow-up uh, questions. But um, get this there. God bless you and have a great day. Bye.